hear that. I'm doing this. Hey, Peroska. Is it actually morning for you right now? I guarantee I'm crying today, so fair warning. I really am right now, but that's okay. I mean, it's okay just because it is. to say what happened without saying what happened, you know? But, um, I was supposed to be going to a conference this weekend. And today I was supposed to fly out. And I had to cancel that. And it's really hard why it had to cancel. And it's all kinds of like, it's all kinds of hard. Why are the mornings the worst when things are hard? <laughs> like, as the day goes on, like, it seems better, but why are mornings the worst? <laughs> I'm sorry that you were started bad. Has it gotten any better? It's 4.40 a.m. <laughs> Not every day is sunshine. So true.
Hi. <laughs> I know, I guess if you I guess if you see me on at this time, you know it's really not good, huh? <laughs> I don't know if today it will get better, but it'll be whatever it is. <laughs> okay, hi. Stop it. It's like much earlier. Go lay down. My doggy wants to go out of this room. She's like, if you're up, can't, can't I go downstairs? But I mean, she could, but she's, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not doing that right now. I, I can't. <laughs> also, she doesn't want cuddles right now. <laughs> she wants to go out. She, um, didn't eat her dinner last night, or didn't eat all of it, and so when I went to bed, she was, like, still guarding her food, which, and, and she didn't actually want to go to bed, she wanted to still guard her food. And I think she's remembering that that's what she was doing and she wants to go back. She has a very strong memory like that. <laughs> she is really silly it's like she's hungry her stomach will be growling and she like sometimes still won't eat she's I don't even know and it's not even like she knows other animals stealing her food <laughs> she's just like <clears throat> I don't know, has decided that's like her job. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good morning, Matt Stitchy girl. Today's just gonna be a super, super slow stitching. <laughs> And like, trying not to gag. <laughs> That's been bad. <laughs> I hope none of you have like a sympathy gag reflex. I've done pretty well on lives, I've, but I can't guarantee it today. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's even go right now. <laughs> My cats do that sometimes, but not very, mm, not usually.
my other dog gets very, um, like, demanding when it's a meal time and nobody's feeding her. Like, when she wants fed, she will let you know. <laughs> she takes the food out when we finish. Oh, Emma, then you know what this is like, right? <laughs> for me, it started, like, three years ago, and it was very, very bad for a while, and then... Like, it acts up every once in a while, but hasn't been, like, this bad. Which makes sense. I haven't been in this much distress for that long. But it's so bad right now. <laughs> but, like, there's nothing to come up. So when the gagging turns to like dry heaving, it's, there's like nothing, <laughs> there's nothing to come up at least, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> I have a cat that does that to me too, like, she wants food and I will give it to her and she'll even follow me and everything and then... Like, she'll be back demanding more food, and we're all like, we gave you food. <laughs> I, I can't, like, I can't, I can't get to my fridge, I can't feed them, I can't. <laughs> There's, I mean, like, I can't, I can't eat, I can't, there's a lot I can't do right now because of it. <sighs> no. Here, just lay down. Thank you for the hug. <laughs> like, and I know, I know that it's, I know that it's my body reacting to stress. Like, it's not, it's not like it's a mystery to me why this is happening. I know why it's happening. I literally put on a sweatshirt and got over here like that. That was me waking up. There he is. He answered some messages and
Getting dressed can happen later, I guess. <laughs> or not at all, I'm not going anywhere. I was supposed to go somewhere. You like that blue. <laughs> it's okay to be biased about it. Um, it's kind of nice because the blue fades out into into the blue. The purple fades out into the blue. And so I kind of just, I can go a long time in between um, hair service. Because <laughs> this is literally, like this blue is, is just, it's fade out. Like it's not, it's not dyed intentionally that way. It's <laughs> from the purple that's, that's gone out. <laughs> you couldn't sleep either. You woke up at midnight? Oh no. It's hard. I absolutely understand. I absolutely understand not being able to go back to sleep. Hi, kitty. Thank you for the hug. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I don't mind. I didn't dye it again. It's, um, it'll go purple again when I do, but it is kind of nice that I get so much use out of like one dye draw because as it fades out it goes into so many different things a lot of people think that I dye purposefully each stage of the way a lot of people really like it when it starts getting really really light up here and then has the blue a lot of people look forward to seeing it that in that stage, but that's the stage when I'm like, no, something needs to happen because light colors on me don't look good. <laughs> I wish I was better. I really did. I wish I didn't hurt so bad. <laughs> but I do. Yes. Yeah, the way my hair fades out, it just, I don't know, it, it works for a while, and then, then it kind of does this ombre thing, and
couple days ago, I told my daughter, I was like, look, if ever I'm not sleeping at, you know, like three in the morning, like I absolutely will go live. She's like, don't do that. You're going to keep other people awake. <laughs> I'm like, there's always another time zone where they're supposed to be awake. <laughs> it's like the U.S. is going to be fast asleep, but I've got the U.K. and... <laughs> It's like the rest of Europe, anywhere from the UK to Australia right now. <laughs> Your natural hair suits you better. <laughs> You're a little jealous, though. <laughs> it's almost 11 in Austria. I like my natural hair too. And one day I'll go back to it. But, um, dyeing my hair kind of became symbolic, like. <laughs> Oh, you're crazy like me and awake too. <laughs> oh man. Um, anyway, my hair became kind of symbolic to remind myself to <laughs> to love myself, to advocate for myself, to be okay with the space that I took up in the world and it reminds me of that every day one day I hope to be secure enough to go back to my normal color though Clearly that today is not that day. <laughs> Hi Lada, it's 5 p.m. in Southeast Asia. I hardly ever get people in Asia because I'm, we're just such opposite time zones, so hi. It's 2 a.m. for you, California. <laughs> I'm just, I'm grateful for you all. I really am. <laughs> Apparently, I deserve all the ones except the one that's breaking me. <laughs> You're working night shift in New Jersey. Hi, Linda. <laughs> I'm not sure me crying is like a good time to catch me live on the first that's probably so true for many of you though
Thank you, Veronica. We can talk literally about anything, okay? No, that's not true. We shouldn't talk about food right now, but... Um... Pray with anything. I discovered that cross-stitch community is so welcoming and always there for you no matter what. Where you are or what you're going. The first community. <laughs> this community is so incredible. It really is. The high energy lady. <laughs> oh, you guys are like. You're the replay warrior. <laughs> Well, <laughs> right now I'm kind of like anybody who watches these replays. Especially the ones in the morning where I'm most likely to be like this. a different vibe than the normal ones, right? <laughs> oh, I would take all the hugs. Every single one of them. It keeps splitting threads going down. Like, that's talent. This is 28 count, and I'm still managing to, like, split threads. <laughs> and I don't normally do that. Just apparently right now when I'm bawling my eyes out. I don't know, the pain just has to go somewhere sometimes. And so here it is.
Tears calm down. I can think of something else to say, but but right now, <sighs> mornings are the worst for resiliency. Lada, I do have some, like, hot drinks sometimes. I can't prepare any right now, so... Right now I have one option available to me until somebody else is awake. <laughs> but I don't, I don't even trust myself to drink that right now. I've managed to, like, uh, practically all my calories right now are, are liquid. And they're still, it's still not, I mean, it's hard to, I don't know, it's not enough by any means. I think I managed 600 calories yesterday. Which is below what your body needs to, uh, <laughs> like, just do its daily functions. Um, which means I know I'm losing weight, which is, oh, it's okay in the sense that it's not, it's unhealthy this way yes and it's I'm not happy about it but like my weight is not like underweight that's what I mean so I think I would try some tea. I haven't tried tea yet. I think I could do that. I just can't make it. But I'd, I would try drinking it, I think. Not that that's going to give me calories, but it's going to give me something. What I do have is some lemonade. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> I'm not even sure how much is in here. It's from last night. It looks like it's like half full, so. Kitty, that's what I've got. Yeah, I have herbal tea. So, and know. I think maybe I will try that today. It'll just be a while until somebody else is awake and I can, <laughs> Kaylin, please make me some tea. <laughs> Kaylin has been fantastic.
been really good that she's been here. This lemonade could actually be watered down a little bit, and that would really, it's a little strong. No, we're not doing this, come on. No, just accept the rich are rotten life right now, and lay down. Valerian. Oh, probably Valerian. I think I know what you're talking about. I don't know that I have any with that one, though. I'll have to look. Like the valerian root, I think, is what it is here. I think, I think we have some teas that have it. I just, I'm, I'm trying to think if I right now have any of the ones that are like for stress or whatever. And those are the ones that tend to have that in it. I know I have a chamomile tea. But I don't know that it has a lot of other things in it. Yes, okay, it is valerian. When I say I'll look, what I really mean is Kaylin will look because, I mean, it's a box. May I, I, maybe I can interact with a box to read a label, but it's in the kitchen and I can't go in the kitchen. You have a cabinet full of tea. You have all the options. I probably have like, six options maybe <laughs> I'm like the only one who drinks tea really so I don't I don't know I don't I don't tend to keep like tons and tons around <sighs> Are you a tea person? And your boyfriend drinks coffee. I usually do like a It's like coffee, but not. It's the cacao bean. And tea, I have tea as well. You can't function without coffee. Yeah, I, I, I've only kind of recently started drinking coffee and It's something that I have found that I can drink right now, partially because I'm not preparing it. Um, 
felt like it's staying down, but I don't know. I definitely am not what you would call a coffee drinker since. I grew up without doing it. You can't drink hot coffee. You can handle maybe two cups tops. Yeah. Maybe iced coffee or a hot iced tea. Well, that's interesting. I mean, iced coffee is good too. I've never been a really big fan of iced tea, though. I didn't grow up in, like, any of the southern states. Now I'm living in Virginia, and, uh... Like, a lot more people, like iced tea down here and I'm like oh, no it's not something I grew up with <laughs> in the state of mind coffee is definitely not the good option <laughs> maybe it's not but when you need calories and you know that you can consume that I don't know like you have to p you have to pick which which is the more important thing I'm also still not real sure how coffee affects me. Like, I mean, here here is probably a poor decision, but like, my daughter's had dance class last night from seven thirty to nine, and. I just go and I sit in the lobby area, um, crafting, <laughs> sometimes it's cross stitch, sometimes it's crochet, and, and I just stay there because I can't, it's not enough time for me to make the drive back home and then come back later, and, uh, So we were on the way, like leaving the house, and I was at seven o'clock p.m. <laughs> I'm like, is this a really dumb idea? Like, like, can we stop by and get a coffee? Because, like, at that point, I don't even think I had gotten to 500 calories. not for trying but like I just had it and I was like I I think I could handle that right now and we got it and I was like this could be bad like maybe it probably it might be preventing me from sleeping later because you know it's like because it's not like I can drink all at once like it was gonna take me the next couple hours to drink it I didn't even drink all of it, like, maybe half. Like, it took me 90 minutes or so to drink half of the coffee. But I was still so tired, like, it didn't affect me falling asleep. Nor do it, nor is it the reason why I woke up early. That 100% is the um, emotional state. 
and difficulty and pain. So I don't know. Especially because like wouldn't wouldn't like having a pretty empty stomach mean that coffee would hit you harder? Like the caffeine? I like and affect you quicker? Cause I definitely have an empty stomach. I don't know that I know enough about how it works in order to say that, so. <laughs> um, I've not tried yet because the idea of eating fruit, which I love fruit, but the idea of it um, the idea of it is not, like, it makes me gag. <laughs> I was just talking about, like, drinking a coffee, like, at night. You know, like, after 7 p.m. and but not really knowing how it affects me like it didn't seem to keep me awake I still like I still got home and was Kaylin was showing me something and I was like trying not to fall asleep on her <laughs> pretty sure that's the opposite reaction coffee's supposed to give <laughs> there's some sugar calories and it's not too heavy yeah I just haven't been able to I just haven't been able to get past like the thought of it there are some things I've gotten past the idea of like if the idea of eating something is gonna make me gag then it it's likely going to be worse once like I'm smelling it and things and like seeing it Because the gagging isn't coming from my stomach, necessarily. It's something different. Like, it's, it's not like a nausea s stomach part. It's... could turn into nausea once something hits my stomach that's not right oh you know what I did try like we tried smoothie with banana and that was not a good idea so the banana is out I've heard grated apple someone suggested grated apple to me and I have not tried that yet I'm trying very carefully to control my gagging right now Um, I don't know. It's re it's really not an easy thing. <laughs> to uh, figure out something that works. Or at or to expand, like I have meal replacement shakes and I can keep those down. But it can take several hours to work through it. So. I don't know, I feel complicated and I'm not trying to be complicated. I'm <laughs> just trying to survive. I 
I'm trying. Yeah. A cracker or a biscuit. I can't. So, Kaylin ate. I thought that I maybe could do crackers. Um... Granted, I'm not sure which version of crackers and biscuits you're talking about. I'm thinking American crackers and biscuits. Um, Kaylin was eating some, like, snacks on the way to dance. And she grabbed a bag of, like, dried apples and some crackers neither of which have a particularly strong smell, but as soon as she was eating them, I was like gagging. <laughs> and I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like the smell of them isn't bad and not even very strong. And I'm like driving, trying to not even trying to keep stomach contents because there was nothing in my stomach to keep in. I'm not complicated. If I'm complicated, then you're a maze. Oh. I feel complicated and I feel complicated not just now, but like in general because Because I, I don't often feel understood. And I've often been like... Unaccepted for who I am and... And I've had to... Um, well, I haven't had to, but what I have done in... Uh... is change change who I am if you can say that you can change who you are I acted differently because it was like just trying to survive you know you're just you're trying and trying to be better and to have something good and and follow feedback that you're given and and then when I started to understand myself better and I tried to explain it to people who should have been like interested in knowing And, un and trying to understand, like, even that was still, like, rejected. Like, well, that's not how, you know, like, that's not how I am, so why would it, why, I don't understand what you're saying. Like, that's the reaction. Like, it's still kind of rejected as how somebody could act. Not act, but, like, internally be wired so that's that's why I feel complicated I think is it's for that reason in Hungarian you have a snack called a rota it is crispy salty shaped bread it's a really crunchy but not healthy snack <laughs> your bread is similar to the pretzels oh I was just stopping to think if I could try pretzels I don't know that I could do the salty health 
I was eating Cheerios yesterday, so, but I really didn't get very much into them. Like, I was trying to envision how much I had, and I was like, maybe like a handful, but maybe two handfuls at the most throughout the whole day. But it was really like two or three Cheerios at a time spread a lot throughout the day. It's just slow going, and I know it's slow going, and I hate it. But, like, I can only do what's in my control, you know? And I keep trying to tell myself, like... I can't, I can't control that. I can't control that. But I can control... I guess I can control, like, this, you know? Cheerios sound amazing, but you don't have those, you'd like to taste it one day. I mean, the very basic original Cheerio is very plain, and that's what I have. And then you have all the other Cheerio kinds that are very sugared up, so... <laughs> But, like, even this morning, like, I was going to grab the box of Cheerios to bring right next to me. I was like, I'm not going to want it now, but maybe in a little bit. But, like, I picked up the box and I was like, oh, no, I'm not even going to try. I Like, I'm going to leave it. <laughs> it's, it's, like, on the other side over here. Oh. <sighs> I do not go to a therapist. And I'll tell you why. I think that it's a good idea. I, I do not mind answering it at all. Um, the reason why I don't is not because I think that it is a bad idea because I do believe that they are helpful and good and can, and can do a lot of good for you. However, Like, they're not all made equally. Like, you can't just go to one and be like, this is going to work. And, like, you have to give them all a try to see if they're going to work. Like, you have to be willing to be vulnerable with somebody. And you don't know if they're going to work. Are they going to be a good fit? The last one I went to see decided on his own agenda. Like, I went for me. Um, for personal reasons. This was a couple years back. Um, like, I went for me trying to work out me <laughs> and this person decided and would not listen to me that like he they developed an agenda that this needed to be couples counseling and marriage therapy and 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 then like a two or th maybe three weeks of that and i was so fed up because anything that i was saying like i was answering all the questions i was doing whatever um and i think that's part of the thing is that like 
there were so many questions, but they were like leading questions. And it was like there was one acceptable outcome. And so in answering the questions, I was like, well, this, this is how I, this is how that, whatever, right? Whatever it is. Um, like this was my reaction. This is how I viewed that. This was this, this, and it was always dismissed. Always. And I was like, great. Somebody else who is like supposed to, I'm not even going to say that a therapist is supposed to be on your side, like to validate your thinking or anything like that. Like, I understand that's not quite their role, but like they should be a bit more neutral and this person was not neutral um this person had an agenda and like just was very very dismissive about everything else so i since then have like, and it took me a while to be like, I'm going to go. Like, I need to do, I, I need to go to help me work through some of this, like, stuff. Um, and I've not been able to convince myself to, like, go be vulnerable with another person. Like, you know, go try again. Like, I'm uninterested in it, even if I know that there are good ones out there. You were lucky when you were a teen and had a good one who helped me so much. This encouraged me to be okay with who I am and gave me the courage to leave home when it wasn't a good place to live at the time. That's good. Like... I just, I couldn't believe that someone else was trying to deny my reality. Like, I was, I was there to try to navigate that discrepancy already. Like, I was already recognizing that, that like I had been having my reality dictated by somebody else. And it wasn't really my reality. <sighs> and then, it, and then it wasn't. It wasn't that. Like they didn't. It was. Yeah, it wasn't good. Your first fell asleep during the session. Well, wouldn't that have made you felt good? I feel like I've done pretty well for not going to a therapist. That doesn't mean that they still wouldn't be good. <laughs> I'm sure they would. But sometimes it just takes more energy than you can give to like find someone and get in with them. You were in your worst state at that time. Well, that makes it extra. Granted, I feel like that's that's true. Like we go, you go with the promise that you know, like oh, therapy's so helpful and it's so good, and I'm like, it is if you can get with a with someone who is good. I have had some good, like, I've had had therapists recommended to me that I feel like I can trust the person recommending them. But, like, they're not taking new patients, you know? 
I'm like, what do you, what do you do then? And then they're like, well, you're just bouncing from recommendation to recommendation and because people aren't like taking new patients. And I suppose it's a good thing when a therapist isn't taking new patients because it means that their clients are happy with them and that they're full. But like that doesn't help you when you're needing something. You still go through things as you're 31. I feel like I wouldn't be able to find that person like I did in my teens. That's why I'm grateful for my dear grandma and trusty job with Holly Hopkins. Yeah. I'm 35 now. I still have it. They have to be able to relate with you. Yes. Like, like I really, I'm, I'm really, I, it's not that I think that they're supposed to say, oh, everything that you say is right. Like, part of their job is to help you navigate maybe where your thinking patterns are stuck or where you are, whatever. But they're not there to, to say that's not what you're experiencing. That, I think, is what, like, got me the worst, is that, is that that's, that's what I've heard, like, all my life, is, is, like, other people projecting themselves onto me, and therefore, that is not what I'm experiencing. I, in complete honesty, like, is it, a, is it weird that, like, I turn to a community a couple thousand large? <laughs> like, and, and like, it doesn't feel like I'm putting myself out there to strangers. <laughs> None of you feel like strangers to me. Like, e even the people that, like, I haven't really had interactions with. Um... Like, most, most of you here right now, like, I've not had, like, a lot of interaction with, but, um, like, you don't, you don't, you don't feel like a stranger to me. So, I don't know if that makes it really weird for me to... Like put myself out there in this way, but um, better help is it's available here too. Yes, I've heard a lot about it. I've considered it, but again, my hang up with therapy just has stopped me still. <laughs> I need therapy and in order to go to therapy. That's what that feels like.
you understand. <laughs> you needed that for the first time. Like, the first time I felt safety. was when I understood that I had never had it. Like, you know, like, because you can't, you can't just say, here I am, I am safe. Or you are somebody I can be safe with. Like, that's not how safety works. And so the first time I felt safety with somebody, like, to this very soul part of me, I was like, oh... This is why I've been stuck in survival mode and I couldn't do anything else. That was actually when I realized I was so stuck in survival mode. That is what got me to start real like accepting that I was being affected by traumas from, you know, over a decade before and things like that like The challenge right now is that that person who was that safety is the one who's hurting me right now. Kitty, we didn't want to recognize that you have a problem. You diagnosed with burnout and severe depression in 2021. You know, didn't want to accept it. I, I basically have burnout and extreme emotional stress. Your therapist, when you were a teen, you didn't really talk to them for like 10 months before you felt comfortable talking to them and felt like they understood me. It's not easy to find me that with others. No. It really isn't. Or you like feel obliged to like well I'm here I feel obliged especially as an adult it's like well I'm here I'm paying money for you like I feel like I have to say something but like it's not really the same thing as opening up A nervous breakdown in 20, two, 2006. Bipolar, schizophrenia with depression, and six years now, and you're still struggling with yourself. I'm sorry. Like, why does life have to be so hard? Oh, go study, Peroska. That's a good thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go study. I'll see you around.
that I really, I think that um, one thing that makes it hard even, like even harder, life is hard. And I think what makes it even harder is that feeling of, of being alone, of, of not having people or not having like that very close, fulfilling relationship person. Because those are like two different needs that I think that human beings have. I think human beings need their village, but they also need like their partner. My head's starting to get a little lightheaded. be okay oh. I've never watched Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> you broke up with your partner after 18 years in June last year. That's got to be pretty fresh feeling still. Like, even if you know that it's a better thing for you. That doesn't. Yes. Okay. Yes. Somebody, somebody said it this way to me. They said, like, there's kind of this hierarchy in happiness and relationships. There is happily married as the like top tier and then happily single and then unhappily married no 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 and then unhappily single and then unhappily married and and I've thought about that so much about how the emotion is is bigger like Here's your span of being single. It's like you've got the unhappy and you've got the happy. But like being married, because the potential for happiness is greater, the potential for unhappiness is also greater. And so when you're not with somebody... who is right or when you feel like you're never the person who is right doesn't mean that you don't still have that need to be with a person just that it's better to be alone than with the the pain of being with the wrong person I guess
46 now in two marriages. Some people say third time's the charm. <laughs> you have two children and two grandchildren. I love that you have that. Do you live near them? Because I know that can make a difference for people too when they are alone in this sense. Of them and it's more than enough. Good. You decided to be alone because the relationship you were in was abusive. The places you're supposed to be safe when they're not makes it worse. <sighs> so much. I'm so sorry. They're healthy and loving is the most important thing for you. And you don't need a fake person by your side. Well, they're not really by your side if they're fake, right? After being single or div divorced since 2010, I don't feel like I have the capacity or desire to maintain my love for a committed father. <sighs> Hi, by the way, bitch in the dairy land. Um... I feel like I know I'm not defined by my relationship status, but I think that that's different than like wanting a significant other who I, I don't feel like I'm asking for a lot. I don't, I really don't. Like, I'm asking for somebody to work with me. Somebody to, like, be my partner. Someone who will work at the skills needed in a relationship. someone that I can love and who can love me. In a way that the other person feels. Like, is that too much? Is that too much to hope for, to want? You're learning to love yourself and accept yourself as you are. Me too. And I've, I have, I've come a long way. Not sure I could say I'm done. <laughs> I'm not done. But but I've made progress.
We can never be done, can we? Not really. And I'm okay with that. We also change every single day. Right, which is why we can never be done. Like, I'm not the same person. Right. I think just because you want it in a relationship doesn't mean that you can have it with anybody, right? And sometimes your experience just means you don't, you're done, like you don't want to. Like you said, like you don't really have the capacity or desire, and, which is like not a negative I don't like I don't consider that a negative thing it's just how it is for you right it kind of makes you feel unwilling to try again Ex exactly like like that's the way that went for you is that you thought you would have it very basic very basic things like Like, it doesn't feel too much to seek out for. And... I... grew up... I want to be careful about how I say this. Um... I grew up being taught that, you know, marriage is a good thing and that, like, kind of like you get married and everything will be good. Um, par particularly from the religion I grew up in. Uh, you get that message. But what they don't really talk about is um, how how to go about finding the person. And then you feel all you feel all this pressure to marry young in that religion. Um, like if you if you wait to get married then you're like not an eligible match anymore it's it's a very strong thing in in this religion um and i like what a disservice you don't even, you don't often get to learn how to be, like, on your own. You're basically thrown from your childhood home into a marital home with hardly anything in between. And the in-between is, like, you're searching for the marital home. Like... Like, and it feels like such a disservice to, to not have had time as an, like, to figure out who I was in a, as an adult and, and to be able to live that before getting into a, a relationship that's supposed to be this great and wonderful thing because promises, promises, blah, 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 and. I'm sorry that he was physically abusive. I know it's been a long time for you since you've been in that situation, but I'm still sorry all the same. I'm 
just, I'm sad for everyone who wants, who wants that little bit of goodness in their lives and yes. I mean, I didn't even know who I was before. Like, I didn't, like, I was just lost. But yes, you look, b before you even knew who you were, which I, I absolutely didn't. I, I came from some, um, childhood trauma in which caused me to lose myself. And then sexual trauma which even more and then it's possible that the it's possible that for me the marital trauma could have been worked through more had I not had the background I did but like, if I knew how to advocate for myself and, like, have boundaries and say stuff. But I didn't. That's the thing. Like, I was who I was. And. So, like, I didn't, I didn't know myself when I was getting married. Let alone be able to, like. I don't know. And now I'm ha now I'm having that time. Like now I am. And in some ways that's still like really scary. Because I'm 35 and like learning how to be myself, you know? Good morning, Jess. I'm a heavy, I'm a heavy time right now. <laughs> I just am. <laughs> but good morning. You actually work today, right? We're just having a therapy session without therapists, that's all. <laughs> Beautiful time. I don't know. I... I want to, I'd like a medically induced coma, please. Like, can I, can I wake up in six months from now and like have my feelings not hurt? I'm so sorry that was the kind of childhood abuse you experienced. Not that any childhood abuse is, is, or any abuse, why, why any abuse is good, but absolutely, like, the difference in, in child abuse, like, and how it affects a child versus a, abuse as an adult who doesn't have childhood abuse, if that makes sense. Abuse that happens to a child versus abuse that happens to an adult literally affects them differently. Because, because children are still forming and so it gets mapped, it gets mapped in your, like, formative things. There's a word I'm searching for and I can't think of it.
like your inner map is is informed by your childhood and so abuse messes it up any any kind of abuse mine was mostly emotional and mental and in my teenage years is when there began to be some physical kind of spread out among multiples like I have siblings who ended up in receiving much more of the physical than some of the rest of us um, and really the physical only happened because like the emotional and mental wasn't working right it wasn't giving the control that that they needed You're getting Nathan ready for school. Good. Silver lining, if there is any, is that I've been able to raise three amazing young men and help them to advocate for myself and also be free to express their feelings fully. Good. Which is harder for males than for females because females are looked at as like emotional beings and, and men are looked at as we can't say anything. So very good. Very good. I look at my daughter and and I'm like, well, she and I have a good relationship. And I have told her for years that um, I don't want the kind of relationship with her that I had with my mother. I've said it for, she knows it. Like, I've said it for years. And I think now that she's getting older, she's learning a little more of the details. Like, she sees, she sees how my mother is. And... But she's, she's learning some of the details of what happened to me. And, and she, just the other day, I was telling her something and she was like, like, you always, you always tell me that, like, you don't ever want to be the type of parent like your mom is. And she's like, you're not, <laughs> you're nothing like that. And she was like, it was just a very mature, like, thank you from a 13-year-old to, to, to be like, wow. Done your best to break generation curses behavior. Yes. Generational trauma. Like, it can stop with us. It does not have to continue. And that's all we can do, right? It's the best that we can do. Which, if you think about it, like, if you, have you ever really thought about that message? Like, I'm just thinking about this right now, obviously. All you can do is the best that you can do, and yet somehow there's still this expectation that the best that we can do is, like, perfection. And if we don't meet perfection whatever that arbitrary level of perfection is, then 
we feel like we're failing or the message is that we're not we're not good enough Perfection doesn't exist. It truly doesn't. And yet, we still feel... Like it's something that it should be attained. Like it's something... Yeah. Your middle son turns 19 today. Oh, happy birthday to him! Oh, I'm I'm so glad that the Navy was a good thing for him. That's good. <laughs> that is good. I'm glad. I just realized it's like 6.20 now. <laughs> people are like, Jess woke up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, people are actually, yep, people will be waking up right now. <laughs> uh, no matter how rocky our relationship is, I try to remember that when I feel guilty about the past. Oh, man. Yeah. I try to remember, like, especially with other people. Well, I, I try to remember this for myself, that, like, I feel like I've always done the best I can. Sometimes the best I can has not been very high. And other times it's high. Like... And so I try to extend that same, mm, I suppose you could call it grace, to other people. Which doesn't change how you're affected by it, but it helps you to move on. Like, to decide how you're acting. It, it, gives, it gives you the control again, rather than... rather than like remaining a victim, I guess. Although it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not affected and you're not hurting and stuff. Your worst nightmare is that you unwittingly, unwittingly cause a lot of pain to your children. You did the best you could, but it wasn't enough for them. That can be hard. <sighs> because that is... That is like giving yourself grace and also hoping that they give you grace. Showing myself grace has been and still is hard. Yeah. We are our hardest critic. And I think that's learned, honestly, is that my inner voice has been far too long informed by other people's voices. So when I think things about myself, I don't believe that it's actually my voice to myself. It's other people's voice 
that has hidden my voice. And I'm trying to change that. Like I'm trying to lessen their voices and give myself more of my voice. My stomach feels so terrible, like th my emotional stomach, I mean, but you know that that affects like your physical, you guys know what I mean. I'm gonna finish this thread and then I, th I need to water down this lemonade a little bit so I can actually drink it. <laughs> and I need to drink something so. I'm gonna need to make that happen. If you'll please excuse me, I apologize for leaving you alone, <laughs> but I need to go water this lemonade down. <laughs>
Okay. I am back. In my pajamas, getting under my blanket, putting up my other blanket. I'm not cold, can you tell? Do I look cold? I don't know. Oh. Like, my house is not even that cold. It's just me. Oh. You can't get warm if you don't eat. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All my problems are related. <laughs> um, I know. I did grab the box of Cheerios, so at least... I was able to do that, but I don't know if I'm ready to eat them yet. You're freezing in your house at 73? Okay, well, my house isn't that warm, but... Ugh. Tiredness doesn't help. Nor does it being winter. Not that my winter's like that cold, but I always am much colder in the winter. I don't know. I've, n I've never felt like I've regulated my body temperature very well. Or I just run cold. I don't know. <laughs> I definitely prefer warm weather. <laughs> Being stressed, tired, hungry always makes me more cold too. Oh, I'm really glad it's not just me. Maybe that's why I'm always colder. It's because I'm like all always stressed. That was something really interesting that came from when I, when I had neuropsychology testing is when I was talking to the doctor afterwards with the results and he's, he's explaining to me about, um, extreme emotional stress and like what that, what that is and how it can and and how it can affect p 
people. Um, like I started to understand like how your southern blood cannot even <laughs> um, I started to I started to understand how um, like much of an emotional stress load I had been living with um like at, and even how I tried to do something about it even if I didn't have like the knowledge or the language to explain what it was that I was doing I could see how my actions were trying But knowing, kind of understanding that, like, how long it's been for me almost makes it, well, no surprise that I regularly am on the cold side. <laughs> this is why I have blankets everywhere in my house, lots of them, <laughs> because I never know, like, how many layers of blankets I need or... Like there's, I have three right now and I'm in a sweatshirt and like not even cold pajamas. I don't, I don't know what cold pajamas are. I just said that. I made it up right now. My daughter doesn't have that problem. She stays warm much more easily. It's been in the upper to mid 30s all week. <gasps> Excuse me. Here in southern Wisconsin, when it gets over 40, it's a warm day. <laughs> that sounds so cold. I have found like I sleep better at night if things cool down so at night I keep my house going to like here we go Cheerios um like one at a time anyway so at n the nighttime temperature of my house is 62 degrees Because I sleep, I do sleep better like that. You're pretty sure you were born stressed? And years of doctors and therapists and all the people have confirmed. Okay, that's actually a very interesting um, thought, Jess. Combined with uh, somebody else, I won't share who, um, but something somebody else told me about like their earliest memory and if this person had wondered like they wondered if that if that's my memory and they were like 18 months old at the time or something or less I can't remember she's like if that's my memory and it wasn't a good one she's like what else do I not remember but I experienced at that time and, and, and so your comment combined with that conversation right now is making me realize, like, the stories that, the story I know from, mm, okay, the stories I know from my childhood about me 
are not positive ones. Like the ones that I've been told. So if the stories that I've been told about my childhood, starting from my birth, if they're not positive, then what it was what was it like? Like actually growing up like I have my own memories of those times um a lot of a lot of negative about that time but like some positive too but how much formed me because if the stories that are told are the negative ones then there were negative feelings at the time and and therefore negative actions So, you're pretty sure you were born stressed, like, literally from my birth. Like, my birth story is like something that's laid on me like a blame. You can almost go outside without a coat on a 40 plus degree. Oh, no. 40 degrees and I'm like, give me my coat and my woolies. Only <laughs> 62, that's a meat locker. <laughs> um, I mean, I also sleep with like five blankets. At, so I think I got used to having to because Kaylin's father um, Kaylin's father was ran warm. And so I had to adapt to that rather than anything else happening so I got I got used to all the blankets plus the weight of the blankets is probably a stress thing like a very like a calming nervous system stress thing you had a pretty traumatic entrance into the world and has been fairly stressful ever since. See? I'm convinced now. I'm convinced that that's a thing. I'm not so sure that my like I it wasn't me myself that had the traumatic entrance but like my mother is the one who had it. Not me. But I don't know. It's not like I did anything. I was a baby. I was literally being born. Nothing in my control. But but how she tells the story always starts with, well, you almost killed me when you were born. Like, how does that not get internalized? and have an effect on you. I'm not... Okay, so I'm... I don't know the technicalities. I don't think... No, Kitty, right. It was not our fault. Literally not my fault. But that's the way the story is told. Well, you almost killed me when you were born. So that that's how my story began. Is... Is that... I know for my mother that, I don't know if it was placenta previa, I don't, I really am not sure. Um, but I do know that she, her, she wasn't continuing to clamp, so she was still bleeding out. Is that this, is that, I, I don't know what it is, I just know that that's what it was. Um, and like the doctors didn't catch it, and so... I don't know, something. It was not 
it was not a c-section or anything like that either exactly like how was that your fault how was it my fault like literally <laughs> good morning rachel today we are talking about heavy things because i got on here in tears and we just kind of have moved from a heavy topic to a heavy topic um yeah how first of all how you don't it's not just that she said it to me as a child because she did she said it to me as a child but she has said it multiple times over the years and it's not even just that because it's kind of her mo is Like, she's never, she's never to blame. However, in the hospital, it's not like she was to blame either. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't her fault. But, like, she placed it on me. It, it's not that she talks about, like, the doctors or whatever. It, it, I don't know. I don't. There's a lot of things about her I don't understand. Other stories from my childhood? You know, I've not really talked about <clears throat> my mother so much. We have at times, haven't we? But anyway other stories excuse me while my s body has issues be okay we're okay um, a lot of the stories she likes to tell she thinks is funny but it's literally making fun of how my body operates like how my nervous system operates which I think is why it took me years like over 30 years to understand how I work and accept it and like lean into it <laughs> because so many of the stories I know from my childhood that have been told to me like outside of my memory well even within my memory but like the ones that are narrated to me right have that detailing like you this was your reaction and it was hilarious and like i'm laughed at every single time every time the stories are told So I suppose it's like no wonder that when I experience something devastating like this right now, I always have thoughts of not being enough. Of not being worth commitment or effort It's a bad morning, Michelle. So yeah, I guess so. I think I've been up since four. Little after four. It's hard when parents are supposed to be your stability and security growing up and then they aren't. 
Yep. You have to commit to yourself first. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and interestingly, in this case, what I believe is happening is that someone is trying to find their way in life. Believes they're doing the best. I believe they're doing the best that they can. But it leaves me a mess. All three of my boys have some form of mental health issues and no matter their actions or behaviors stem from those have I ever blamed them or made them feel left out because of it. That's good parenting. That's what parenting should be. Thank you, Michelle. I'm like very extra sensitive today because of what I'm supposed to be on an airplane right now. That's it. I'm not the youngest, Jess. I'm the third out of seven. Um, okay, so obviously it wasn't too traumatic for my mom. She was willing to try again. No, however, all seven of us children, what we get to hear is that she didn't want to have any kids and that the only reason that she had kids was because of my dad. So, there's that. She had four more kids after me, but all of us are told she didn't even want kids. And even now, now she like, um, she'll be like, I'd wash my hands of this family, but like, won't. Like, she'd walk away, but she won't. Here's the thing. She says that, but she won't because she's a victim narcissist. Like, she, if she walked away, she couldn't play the role that she so desperately needs. Because infants totally have control over that. They made those choices. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle, we were talking about this, um, this part earlier, so you missed Jess's story. She, um, when she was born, her m mother bled out and almost died. Um, it was an emergency C-section and everything. And for, and for me, my mom also almost bled out. Um, and that's, that's the narrative of my birth story is it always starts with, well, you almost made me die. You almost killed me when you were born. So. See, just like <sighs> my youngest sister, um, is married and 
her mother-in-law, she says there's a very key difference between her, our mother and her mother-in-law. And one is that her mother-in-law goes to therapy and will admit when she's wrong and apologize for it. Whereas my mother will not. She just, like, it's always, always somebody else's fault. I know that my daughter knows her birth story and it wasn't traumatic like like you had at all. Um, and I think how the story is told makes a difference. And the age in which they, they feel. Or they hear it, I guess. You're devoted to therapy this year to get through your traumas and stop taking them out on your husband. Good for you. partner was narcissist they're always the victim they never admit any failure absolutely I have I have one sister who's on very strict no contact and has with her and has been for at least three years um, I have another sister who's got very strong boundaries. She, she says she's okay, like, you know, if she wants to interact with her children, sometimes, but there's, there's pretty strong boundaries there. Um, so it's not like no contact, but it's definitely very, very minimal contact. And then, um, I have another sister who's currently on no contact, but like, I don't know. My mother still is like, what's wrong with everybody? <laughs> Can't possibly be her. You don't blame your mom. She definitely had a lifetime of her own traumas. And actually had it way worse than you. Back then you didn't talk about it or process those type of things. Well, because there wasn't language for it. There really wasn't. It's like PTSD wasn't a diagnosis until the 80s. Like, that's new. So absolutely. For years you did blame her for how she was, but knowing what I know now, I don't. Only because she got herself help and tried to make it better and tries to be better every day. Yeah. Um... I don't think I blame my mom necessarily. In some ways I do, I think. Because she, yeah, absolutely, she had her own things from growing up and whatever. Um, But I think saying things how they are isn't the same thing as blaming, right? Like, I'm not sure that I, I'm, I'm not sure that I know where that line is. Like, where is blaming? I also feel like whenever I'm venting, I'm complaining, and I have been told that that's not the same thing. <laughs> we did... Four years of contact with your husband's family. 
No one held his mom accountable. She hasn't changed. She held my... Yeah. My daughter sees my mother for who she is. There's like... And we talk about it. Um, there'll be times when Kaylin will be like, we'll, we'll have spent time in her presence and then we'll be finished. And Kaylin will go, so I'd like to hear about how this time went from your perspective of grandma. <laughs> like, and then we'll have this conversation about like her behavior and how crazy it is and what we what we can do about things like that <sighs> I mean but she's 13 she's not I wouldn't have done this when she was younger but I can do it now Rachel with my own mom I understand that she suffers from her own trauma and she did the best she could raising it but that doesn't mean I can yes exactly like you can still be affected you can still be hurt um, and those things are still valid and also, whether or not they do anything to change. But, like, there's going to be people who don't even understand that they need to do something. Like, they don't see at all that they are a problem. Yes, even if there's a reason, we're allowed to have reactions. Like, that's not something that they get to choose for you. They can choose their own actions, but they don't get to choose how it's received at all. God was the bad guy, but I don't care. He won't let her do things the way she did to your husband. He won't let her continue to hurt my husband. Good. Good for you, Michelle. You are right, stop or mine begin. Yes. And I think one thing that, that Kitty said earlier was, um, like, you have to commit it to yourself. And I know that we've talked about this sometime in the last couple days, is, um, is that, like, you have to know, like, it was yesterday when I was talking about boundaries, who I don't know that any of you were the ones who were here at the time um but like you have to you have to know yourself and you have to love yourself and you have to be willing to you have to know where your rights begin in order to know where someone else's stop And sometimes knowing what is your right is not easy. Especially if you're used to feeling like you don't have any. Or feeling like they're always at somebody else's whim. This is the year you devoted to becoming. I have a lot of pain that I have to get through. I'm in a different boat. Your mom is your best friend and is always wonderful to me. You have had issues with your dad that you need to address. Your dad was your saving grace. Give him love. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't really have my dad either. So I can't say that I had one parent but not the other. My dad was just different and still is. He's very, very passive.
that's all I can do, Rachel, is, like, we can just try to do, like, not pass on the bad things. Cost me a ton of guilt because I never realized how much I put on him to get you through. And you feel like you never thanked him for that. I'm sorry, Jess. I'm sure he knows, though. Yeah, just like Michelle said, like, he has to know. I mean, sometimes Kaylin says something, and, and I'm like, I don't think she realizes the depth of what she's saying. Maybe she does, but... Like, it, it tells me that... You have a good relationship, you know? So even... Even if Kaylin doesn't, like, expressly says something like, you know, like, uh, thank you or you're a good mom or something like that. She gives me other indications. Um, Y'all dying, <laughs> we got you crying this morning. <sighs> well, I was already crying, so... Um, I've, I've done that and I'm trying not to keep going back. I feel like I should just have a, like a warning up, like tread carefully because tears are right there. And you know by now that crying is totally fine here. <laughs> Sensitive stitching stitch with me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that sounds accurate. Maybe I'll name my next one that. Oh my gosh. My children always tell me I'm the best mom in the world, but I know where I could do better and it bothers me a lot. You don't need, I mean, yes, we know what we can do better, but that doesn't mean that they don't recognize, like, they appreciate you, Kitty. Logically, I know my dad knows how much of my world he was and how I didn't take him for granted. I think with his unexpected passing. Yes, anything that's unexpected like that, like, like the adjustment that you now have to do right like <sighs> like you have to adapt and move forward without the person that helps you move forward like, that's so difficult. Incredibly difficult. Yes, Chrissy, it's early. I've been up since...
when did I go live? Like 4.40 or something like that? My time? I know, it's early. It's early, yet I've only done 211 stitches in the last two and a half hours. But it's been excellent conversation. It's been heavy, but that's not bad. I love hearing these things, like these... I tell Kaylin all the time, like... Like, how you feel is valid. And will always have place, like... I may struggle with them sometimes, but I always like go back and, and I like, this was on me. <laughs> like I was struggling with, with your emotion, but I'm okay now. Like I'm get, like, let me give you the proper space for that. Sometimes I have to do that. You went to your dad for everything, good, bad, happy, sad, all of it. Two and a half years, and only now learning how to navigate those things without him. comments making me cry, Jess. I had a moment last year when I thought my dad was going to die and I really turned my relationship around with him. He was going to take us with him and take him out when we had other kids. Good. You said you went to a naturopathic doctor, right? I am that sibling for my siblings. My siblings aren't that for me. My siblings don't know I'm going through this right now. Because I think that they would, um, I don't know, like, send, like, a comfort message, but then that'd be it. I don't, they're not the ones who would check in on me. Or, like, I don't know, spend hours on the phone with me or something. Exactly, Jessica, I don't think they know how to be that for me, and I, I do understand that. Um, <laughs> goodbyes are hard.
literally you guys, Michelle. I have one person who knows. It's just not a family member. There, there is somebody who knows. Um, all the details I'm not saying here. There is somebody. <laughs> there is the the person who knows also knows that they're the only ones who know um <laughs> It wasn't even a hesitation just like As soon as I was like I need I need to reach out who do I reach out to? And I was like, all 2,000 followers, like 2,000 of my closest friends. Like, I, that's what I literally say to Kaylin when I'm talking about you guys. I'm like, oh, I'm just chatting with 2,000 of my closest friends right now. Because that's what you guys are. <sighs> my siblings, we reach out to each other. Especially my sisters. Um, it's just that... They know how to be to each other in a different way than they are to me. And I think it's because I've... There was a time growing up that my mom's crazy kicked up a notch. And um, I ended up having to fill this more parenting role. I mean, I wasn't the oldest, but, but at that time, my oldest sister was in college and my second oldest was not somebody who would do it um and it ended up being me and so even though we will reach out to each other it's different when it comes to me I think it's wonderful when people have good family relationships, like those of you who have great relationships with your mother or anything, um, or like, you know, your sister's your best friend or, you know, you could talk to them about anything. Like, I love it. It's just not what everybody else it's not what everybody experiences, right? If you weren't sisters, you wouldn't have been friends. You've no, yeah. Oh, I completely understand that. 
distinction, Jess. Like, not a bad person, but not being compatible. I absolutely understand that. Hi, Stephanie. I did not know you were here. Older siblings are from your mom's first marriage and Tinder's older, so we saw a different side of her than we... Yeah. Like... Oh, that's interesting, Jess, is that you're, like, s still, like, you understand your relationship with your sister, but, like, it's a different relationship with her kids. Oh, totally fine, Steph. You can always lurk. It's not... <laughs> it's always okay to do that. Yeah, my oldest sister, because she was in college when... when m more crazy. Um, it took her a lot longer to see the problems. Um, and she's significantly less affected by them than the rest of us are because she didn't experience it. It probably annoys your sister to no end. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh. Click. sister didn't see the issues until it was directly affected her and then I think my oldest sister saw that there were issues but I don't think she quite understood them because she was separate from them like She didn't experience, like, the fear of physical abuse or fearing for your life kind of a thing. Like, she didn't experience that. Okay, Jess. All the best of luck to you for your first day back at work. Same. Steph, the same. She's, my mom's not out. But she doesn't get to know what's in my life.
And she knows that. She knows that she is kept out of everybody's lives. But, like, somehow it's all our fault. Rachel, this, we're just, I'm just making everyone cry, okay? Like, here, we're just making everyone cry. That's what's going on. <laughs> and I'm not sure that I can say I'm sorry. <laughs> because I'm not so sure that it's a bad thing. <sighs> I think whether or not somebody like owns their behavior and is trying to like make amends that can make a huge difference but she's not ever going to oh Steph oh no not okay my mom does not try to get physical anymore she only ever did get physical when the emotional and mental wasn't sufficiently breaking us enough. Like, that behavior is on them. Completely. That's manipulative, Jeff. Steph. That's that's what manipulation is. And it's like emotional abuse. It's not like true and honest behavior. Some people will do anything to try to keep any power over you. The lack of hearing I love you from my mom as a child I think has made me more conscious of saying it daily to my kids. Yeah. I didn't really hear that either. Honestly, I'm not sure that I did. I 
think there may have been like other actions that may have meant that. I'm going to open my curtain. Back in my nest here. Now that she's around, you don't leave your child with her most of the time when she's around. She's neglectful. The narcissist for Cersei so you have to take that into account. Yep. Yep. When you're half asleep and you have six more minutes to go, I still can't say I love you. I don't want to avoid it. Aw. That's the best. I love that. I have a few friends whose moms are their everything to you, and before that, which my mom prayed. Yeah. There's somebody on Facebook. Her page is Haley Runnels. Um, she's a really good person to follow for mm, to have space in which it's okay to have mother problems basically <laughs> you'd have to go look at her content to see but um i saw a post i don't know probably not that recently but i saw a post from her over the holidays i guess is when it was about how she When her mother, her mother likes to say something about like, you're going to cry, you're going to cry when I die because we don't have a relationship and you're going to regret that. And Haley, Haley says, I probably will cry when she dies, but not because of regret, but because of kind of like grief over what I didn't have. It's not for the mom I lost, but for the mom I never had. And that reading, that was very impactful on me. All right, Michelle. Have a good start to your day. <laughs> now that we had the emotional start. I know it's just like it's just another emotional manipulation tactic really It's like your family unit, when you're a child, your family unit is like the, supposed to be the place where you can like be safe to explore and learn and like be well adjusted. <laughs> she said that almost every time you've had a boy. That's funny.
Yeah. That's what it that's what it's going to be. And even though some of that mourning and grief takes place now, I imagine that it'll still take place then. <laughs> the school buses are coming through the neighborhood. And all I can think of is that Carolyn's not going to be awake for like probably three more hours, maybe two, two to three more hours. <laughs> I sometimes think my mother and my husband and I never had to then have guilt thinking that because I had a mom and I did try it as a parent, but not how I needed her. The guilt, I think, goes away once, once you are like, some things just are. And it's okay that they just are. Good for you, Steph. <laughs> I mean, like, she do she doesn't meet your first child for a month, but then she tries to hit you when he's three months old. First child, it was her choice. She's upset from her own choice. Okay, that's fair. Now it's yours. Good. Like, you do not need an already, like, emotional and stressful time of labor and birthing to be added upon by her presence in any way.
not entirely sure I put enough water in here when I put more water in here. But it's better. There's flower or leaves there, I didn't know. <laughs> like these greens. There's a lot of things on this pattern that I start stitching and I'm like, oh, had no idea what that was. <laughs> oh, there's some more detail I had no idea was in here. Stephanie, we're so close to the end. Thanks for being here and for chatting. <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous because I'm at 239 out of 570 stitches. Like, it's been three hours. <laughs> and I've not even done like a hundred stitches an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but I guarantee to you guys that if I wasn't here I would be in my bed still overwhelmed with painful thoughts I did a group therapy <laughs> see who needs a therapist I have this <laughs> it's okay kitty People I hear come and go, it's okay. <laughs> and so I suppose doing this is better than the alternative right now. <sighs> yeah. I suppose you could say that laying in my bed and 
being in the depths of despair is also energy into something I love. But in a very painful way. There's never a requirement to comb it, thank you. Sometimes not being alone, I think, is, is like being distracted. And sometimes it's just <laughs> sharing the same space together sharing the silence together. <laughs> Spending time with people who see you is worth it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I truly never <sighs> would have thought or never thought that I would have had people who saw me and cared.
oh, like, now you really know that when I say that, like, my messages are always open if anyone ever needs. You truly can know that I mean it. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> um, I have vitamin D, I think. I might have run out, I don't know. And I'm never really sure if it helps me or not. Um, but I, well, I suppose it does. I just have to take large quantities of it and I, I'm not very good at taking large quantities of it. Um, I'll have to look and see if I have it. I'm also not sure that I could swallow a pill right now. I, I should be able to, but. <sighs> I truly don't know what impact I have. <laughs> I'm always very surprised. I'm like, I still don't know how that's possible. Like, how is it that you guys are still here? When I'm like, a mess. Like, what is it? Today is Wednesday, so like four, four days now. The fifth day is today, the fifth day. I have heard of those lights, Catherine. I'll have to look into getting one. I'm not alone in it. I mean, there's conflicting emotions about that, right? <laughs> like, I'm sorry that you're also a mess, but I'm glad to not be alone. <laughs> I know, I know the feelings will last as long as they will last. <laughs> I'm 
but um I so wish I didn't have them. I so wish it was different. Hi, Steve. <laughs> It's so badly to be different. But it's not, I guess. I don't want to have to be this kind of strong. <sighs> I don't want my my moving forward to include this pain.
like how <sighs> how many times How many times will I dare to dream? Just to have it smashed and broken. Throughout my life, I've thought that. <laughs> that meant dreaming was bad. It only brought pain, so why do it? It wasn't worth having hopes and dreams and desires. You just had to take what someone was willing to give. Because at least it was something. Because there's But then I started, at some point I started again. And Was it worth it? <laughs> Was it worth it? Now I know myself, and that <laughs> like I can't stop dreaming is just a part of who I am.
and they can't stop hoping. Yeah, and I can't stop striving. So, I will, I will always, I will always be open, vulnerable. There are some dreams I still have. And others I feel will always be denied to me. Ones, ones I've had since I was a young child. I think the things that are hardest are the dreams that aren't ones you fulfill on your own. Rachel, I think that's why I love fantasy so much, too. <laughs> There's something, something that fantasy can do that not even other fiction books can do, but you can get them in other fiction books, too, is that because it places you outside completely the context of the world you know <laughs> you're able to look at problems and situations and and solutions in a different way that you then are able to take into the real world even if you don't understand that's what you're doing, that's 
that's what happens is that like certain topics and subjects become more available to you because you don't have the the same like reality check in the fantasy world it kind of bypasses that rationality that we just kind of give everywhere Many of my favorite books are fantasy. And many of them contain like characteristics that I want to embody. And And also characteristics that I want in a, in a life partner. But I still don't think that they're unrealistic. I think, don't think it's too much to ask for. It's not like any It's not like I need somebody who plays the guitar and goes walking on the beach. <laughs> but isn't there somebody who... sees me and who I see and will commit
It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be free from problems. It just has to be together. That would be perfect. Why is that denied to me? Nicole. <sighs> well, 
I suppose. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not entirely sure where I stand with God right now. The religion I grew up in. Has kind of, um. Made some difficulties for me and I'm. Trying to figure out where I am. There. Hi, busy hands. Hi, Richter. Richter. <sighs> Hope is not here right now. Just like devastation. <laughs> and for all of you waking up. Starting your day here right now. Thank you. We were talking about that earlier, busy hands. Is um how some people have family they can go to and other people don't. Nicole, you're on top chat. You can't get it on live chat. I don't know how to help with that. I don't know the solution. I think that's kind of where I'm finding myself, Dairyland. I'm still very much navigating it. Because there's a part of me that kind of just wants to throw it all out. But there's also a part of me that says... I'm not sure that that's really what I think. It's just that I've been through bad things. Like, so have you. 
I really don't like the idea that there's a purpose for going through bad things. But I do believe that bad things can be used to by us. to be the kind of people we want to be. <laughs> They're not religious either, but you do have my other community that way. Yeah. And that's kind that's kind of, that, well, that's one of probably three reasons in which I am still in the religion that I am in. It's because there is a community and like there are things that I would lose by leaving it. probably not the things that they think that I would lose. And I, I do like to be careful about what I say because I don't want to slam anybody who is religious or like whatever their faith or spiritual journey is. Like I don't, I don't want that. We were the worst at judging people. Island girl, your message disappeared, but good morning. Um, I do kind of find that some, some kind of hum, like, bad humor, I guess, that a lot of religious people miss the whole point of religion and end up being all kinds of judgy, and I think that's what organized religion does a lot. Um, again, I want to be careful about what I see here. I'm not trying to be harsh against anybody's views or anything. But I think it's very easy in a religion to say like these are the behaviors that you need in order to like, I don't know, go to heaven or whatever it is that your viewpoint is. And then also, like, we want others to know about this, and so we need them to know what they need to do in order to also go to heaven or the afterlife or whatever. 
And I think that's where the judgment starts coming in. Is when we start saying, like, I love you so much that you need to do what I do. Because that's the only way for your eternal welfare. I don't know. Then your path becomes dictated and then people start judging like, well, here's that, here's this. No, I have not. I've not had my shake. I don't have it with me. There's nobody else awake. And it's in the fridge. And the last time I got in the fridge, I was dry heaving. So, I can't do that. But what I do have is some lemonade and some Cheerios. That's what I've got. Unlike a mountain of tears and an even bigger mountain of heartache and pain. <laughs> love and karma are universal and those are like pavements on the skin I don't think you can go wrong with loving people and giving them space to make their own choices and live their own lives even if you personally believe that you should be living in a different way I don't think that you can go wrong. This lemonade that I'm drinking, I don't actually, I think, I don't think it has calories at all. It's like flavoring. So like, when I'm counting up my calories for a day, I'm always estimating. But the lemonade doesn't really give it to me. The Cheerios, a serving size is well, I don't quite understand. They give me two different serving sizes, but then is the calories count for the bigger size? Probably. It says one and a half cups of Cheerios is 140 degrees. I guarantee you I did not get anywhere near a cup and a half yesterday. I probably didn't even get a, a half a cup. <laughs> the meal replacement shake is like 340 degrees. Calories degrees. Oh my gosh. Calories. So there's that. When the missionaries came to the Alaska villages, there was a lot of shame imposed, and the reason I never learned my native language was because my grandma was shamed for speaking her language. You know what's interesting is that when you look at history, so many wars were fought because of religion. Like, doesn't that miss the whole point of religion? Hi, island girl. Hey, look, another book recommendation. You Can Heal Your Life. It's 
Wow, there's a lot of ratings on this. I've added it to my Goodreads. Um, honestly, I don't expect her to wake up for another hour at a least. Two hours is more likely. <laughs> it's okay. Like, I, I'm not gonna die, I guess. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do when she's not here. Tomorrow evening she goes back to her dad's for s the weekend. So... She's a little worried about that too. She's worried enough to have brought it up. Good morning, Sonia. I'm not entirely sure that I am the sunshine today. Pretty sure it's all you guys today. I'm also pretty dehydrated. So. Um, it's gotten better. She does okay going over there now. It's not her favorite, but, um, she's worried for me. Um, because she won't be able to get me, like, stuff from the fridge or prepare any food that I think I might be able to eat. She's like, how are you, how are you going to do that? And I was like, I don't know, I'm going to have to get in the fridge and then, like, deal with the dry heaving afterwards I don't or during and afterwards I don't know that I have another option okay busy hands I will get to your message okay she's 13 and she's so sweet Um, I drank a vitamin C. It took me a while. Um. But I haven't tried Gatorade. I imagine I'd be able to since I could drink the vitamin C. It did just take me like three days to drink the, ga the vitamin C. Probably because it wasn't the only thing I'm drinking, but. Jello water? 
I'm not sure. I don't know what Jello water is. So no. <laughs> And really, like, the shakes just taste better refrigerated. I don't think they have to be refrigerated. So really, I could just pull them out and have them with me. And then I wouldn't have to deal with the refrigerator. And it's not even, it's, I don't know, the refrigerator doesn't smell bad. But there's just a lot of, like food stimulation going on in a refrigerator. <laughs> I don't know. Make jello like regular, but add twice the amount of cold water it calls for. Take a sip of beer straw every time. Huh. Literally, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> it could work. The idea of it isn't, like, gag-worthy, so... That's good, at least. I don't have jello. I'd have to go to the store, but I might need to go anyway so that I'm prepared for the weekend. Hi, honey bunny. For some reason, it only works if you drink it through a straw. We have straws. I'm glad to know these different things I can try. Because last time I just had no clue what to do. Um, and like, Thank you, honey bunny. I've... I am a... I am a mess today. I just... I'm a pretty big mess.
I'm so appreciative of like the collective wisdom of everybody to give me options. Usually MS2 is your baseline. <laughs> Have you seen, I don't even remember which Marvel movie it is. And I th I'm pretty sure it's one of the Avenger movies with um I can't even remember the scene it's a fighting scene obviously but the Hulk says um like he says like He's, somebody asked him, like, well, what's your trick? And he was like, I'm always angry. Like, he's always ready to turn into the Hulk. Because he's always angry. Like, that. There was something in that that I related to. Not that I'm always angry. <sighs> when was the last time I fell into a depression like this? It wasn't wintertime. Um, so what this is, it's not totally depression, um, like I, I've, I have been very darkly depressed before, um, and this isn't totally it. It's it's pain from the actions of another person. It's being hurt very, very, very deeply. My body is reacting to extreme emotional stress. Yeah, that's it. Time for you to get angry, buddy. I'm always angry. That's exactly it. Yeah. I knew somebody would know it. <laughs> um, like, there's something in that that I was like, anger is not the same emotion for me, but it's kind of like, I'm always there. <laughs> anyway, yes, what this, this is, this is my body reacting to emotional stress in a, in a very extreme way. I'm yeah, that's, that's what this is. I think that's where, like, maybe stress is the right word. Like, I'm always stressed. And, and I, I, I totally understand. I, I do receive messages and I, I really do appreciate them all. Um, but some of them I struggle a little bit with because Because some, you don't get to, I mean, like, what stresses you is a very personal thing. And it's not so easy to just say, this doesn't stress me. And, um, and when I, when I say extreme emotional stress, this is, official from a doctor, right? Um, and it's not just your everyday kind of stress. It's extreme. Like, and it's mm, on multiple fronts. 
and wow I don't know why I'm not stitching while I'm talking but I guess that's what the last what four hours and 17 minutes have been <laughs> um, It's that I was under a load for so long. For decades, right? And and then literally broke. You're welcome, Rachel. Thank you for being here for them. <laughs> I'm obviously not done with the, the deep discussions here. Um, like, but it was like this literal breaking. And... And it, and it didn't have anything to do with, um, like whether or not I was, I was strong or, or anything. It was that the load was heavier than anybody should have been carrying for that long. And and ever since then, I mean, that was basically the explanation. I mean, not those exact words, but basically, um, like what was physically happening was not due to a physical like disease or something like that right um but that my body absolutely was responding to what was being perceived as stress in this emotional way and emotional was like not just feelings but also like thoughts and things like that too yes And I think that once you've been broken, I don't think that you're weaker, but I think you're more susceptible. Like it's easier for stress to be like triggering, I guess. Like that's, that doesn't, that's not the same thing as being weak, whatever being weak is. You understand it. <laughs> Sometimes I never know if I'm like, am I even explaining this in a way that's going to make sense? 
because because it is one of those things where if you if you haven't experienced it it's hard to kind of fathom Once it finds an easier way through a new path, it's forged. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I don't, I don't recognize mm, because I spent so long living with the emotional stress, um, like, like the whole load, I have a hard time recognizing it now. I describe you half the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry for that. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like, I have a hard time recognizing when I'm, when I'm feeling stressed now because I'm always angry, right? Like, it's like this sense of always being stressed. I've always been that way. So like my baseline's not very healthy. And so when I'm like, well, I, well, I'm not stressed because this feels normal. Like normal is stressed. And so like trying to find a new normal, like this, like being able to recognize stress when I'm feeling it so that I can do something appropriate about it isn't very easy to do. Partially because it's very hard for me to have the opposite um, experience of what it's like to not be stressed. which in the body keeps the score, it's very adamant that your body needs. Your body needs, literally your body is keeping like these tally marks and the more like trauma or stress or whatever that you experience, it's got like this huge tally and you need these deep visceral experiences to give you tallies on the other side. And if you manage to get enough tallies on the other side, then your balance shifts. And this is kind of where I get angry about my situation right now. Is because that balance was shifting. The other thing I was going to say before I, you know, anyway, is um, because I don't recognize the stress very well, my body has to act up. And then I go, oh, there's a problem. And so when I'm like, and I recognize it in my sleep, like my sleep is not great. I never wake up feeling rested. Even if I get in the hours, it's still not rested. And like I can understand scientifically now, I understand what's going on. But like if I can't do anything about lessening the stress, then like what can I do? You know, and it's, and it's like this, it's very deep seated stuff, which yes, I know only gives arguments for going to therapy, but we've talked about that. <laughs> so it's like, it, it, it is when like my, my sleep gets worse. I'm like, oh, something, something is, is going on. Something extra is going on. Or like when my gagging starts up, something extra is going on. And so right now, yeah. <laughs> You have the same issue with exaggerated physical reaction to stress and has made you become an escape artist when it comes to things that stress me. 
Yeah. It's hard. It's hard once it gets to the physical. Like, once it starts... Once you start reacting to it in the physical. Maybe for a time you treat yourself as if you are always stressed. If you can learn to be without stress or making yourself... Or make treating yourself a daily thing, you might relearn to recognize the symptoms. And this is why I have stitched a lot. Because when I broke the first time and I start recognizing that the stress is worse and I realize I have to do something, you know? But when I'm feeling better, it's hard to still treat myself like I'm under a stressful load, even though I understand that I am, because I understand that, you know, like the rational thing, doesn't always translate into the other things. Be on and off the phone the whole time. Yes. And, and in listening to my body, like I am able to kind of gauge better what's happened and what's not. But so often it's outside of my control. Um, you know, like I can't, I can't. I can't do a thing about what other people do and how they treat me. Um, I, I can only have boundaries on what I do in response. Um, how do I relax the stitch and create calmness in me? Yes, though that doesn't necessarily mean that time, it's, it's time really. Um, and like my mind is constantly going. It's hyper focus. I was just trying to say that. Um, like my my mind doesn't like it'll just churn. It'll churn and it churn, and it's hard to get away from that. So. So allowing time and staying very occupied in the, I don't know, this is different from relaxing because what I do in this kind of a time frame is different from what I might say when I'm not in this extreme state. When it, hi Shauna, <laughs> when it gets stressed, you start eating and using food to comfort me. I mean, I gag, so I, I don't have that. <laughs> um, that doesn't mean I don't emotionally eat at times, but that's usually like hormonally emotional rather than stress emotional. You stitch to try to get the energy out too. Yeah, like it occupies me. Sometimes it occupies me enough. Right now, it wouldn't. Like, oftentimes I will... You know, I'll stitch and I'll watch floss tube. Um, but right now, that combination's not enough to get me through. Um, maybe because I keep stop stitching. Maybe that's maybe that's my problem right now. <laughs> um. <laughs> We're four and a half hours in, and I'm at three hundred and fifty-seven stitches. Um, <laughs> and many deep topics and 
crying sessions later. Goodness. Um. And I do think that there's a lot that you can do on your own. I completely get that. You're frogging right now. <laughs> Somebody said, like, stitching is like, you know, stabbing, right? So, like, you can stab whatever you're angry at. And I'm like, but I can't. Like, that is not how my soul works. My soul does not work in inflicting pain on other people. Like, I will take it on myself. before I'll inflict it on others. So this is never stabbing to me. This is creation. I guess I don't really, I don't really think of, like, staying super occupied like this. Um, you now want blood on your fabric. <laughs> um, <laughs> that distracted me. I don't know what I was saying now. Oh, I know. Like, I don't think of like staying super occupied as like trying to escape what's happening more of like just get through it because I can't escape it like here we are we're talking about can you not you, you're bumping everything come on no come back over here thank you um like we're talking I'm stitching all the things but like I am still absolutely in my head having the thoughts my heart and soul is feeling the pain like that may sound very dramatic and I don't really care if it does but but like it's it distracts me enough to let time pass and to let time work do I know Dr. Gabor Mate? I do not. Tell me of Dr. I assume that's a male. Gabor sounds like a male name. He's a psychiatrist. Okay. Is there like a top one that you recommend? There's lots of videos on YouTube as well. That's good outreach.
He just purchased home in the mountains. Yay. Just not kidding yet. As soon as it hits your email in the meantime, you're going to mm -hmm. stop at your own. Yes, it is a 28 count back. Yeah. Hopefully you can try it out. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Inherited. You normally stitch 25, count one over one. Five inches of snow on the ground and counting. Sunny here. 28 count. That's what I'm stitching. He had a very good talk in my room. Oh, okay. Busy hands, are you asking which pattern is home in the mountains? Could you all look him up? I need to write him down though in a different place. Four. Uh, Home in the Mountains is the Rivendell piece. Have you seen that one? I don't have the picture right next to me. I show it so often. <laughs> no. But it's, it's a Rivendell piece by Golden Kite. Different one. Different pattern. I just keep it by me all the time, but where I am me. This one. There we go. <laughs> yeah, this this is the one, busy hands.
it is so beautiful and I'm really looking forward to starting it next month. I, I don't even know how many people now are starting it with me. <laughs> it's like grown enormously. <laughs> You're sick now. I'm sorry to hear that. Trying to hydrate slowly with 50 ounces of water. That's good. <laughs> I've shown it so much recently that I'm never really sure who has seen it and who hasn't so <laughs> plus since we we keep calling it by two different names because a lot of times we just call it Rivendell but technically that's not its name and that's why my husband doesn't let me drive in big cities because he thinks I'll get lost you have an enormous Nalgene. My my water bottle I usually drink from is like 64 ounces, so I get that. I'm just not drinking from it right now. For reasons. Hey girly, how are you today? We've covered lots of deep, heavy, and emotional topics today. <sighs> but that trend does not need to continue. But it can. But, uh... <sighs> Been in a Zoom meeting. Kitty, thank you so much. You've been here for so long. I mean, in and out, but still. Thank you for being here and for all your comments. Girly, I'm rough. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you. But what am I not giving up? That I think is what I'm struggling with, okay. <laughs> I don't know.
like I'm pretty certain I was crying for like 30 minutes straight. So. So now I'm like sleep tired as or lack of sleep tired, but also like crying emotional tired. I'm like, I don't understand what I don't like it when I don't understand things. Like I can accept people's behavior and still not want and still want to understand why it was like, I don't understand. I don't understand how it could be like that. I'm like, I can't leave it alone. Especially right now, it's too raw to leave it alone, but. Yeah. That kind of tired is hard. Once you saw a funny cross stitch about mindlessness and son of mindfulness. Oh gosh. Humor is your coping mechanism. Humor is a very new thing to me. It's also right now painful, in a way. But, that's okay. <sighs> Tears are helpful. It is good. It's not that I regret the, the crying. I don't. I'm much more limited in what humor I like. <laughs> My daughter is, is very like morbid in her humor. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Buy her something expensive this Valentine's Day. And the guy is holding a card in her hand. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of egg, egg things right now.
previous of this can again. <laughs> well, because those were expensive. <laughs> that was a really, it still is expensive. Jeez. Filling up the, your vehicle is a lot. COVID parodies on YouTube got you through 2020. <laughs> I never saw very many of them, but I saw some. 2020 was the year um, that I first broke. So, kind of like the effects of COVID was almost like nothing to me. Because I was already, I was already broken. What was COVID gonna do to me? You finally found your hot glue gun recently, so you made it into an ornament for your Christmas tree. <laughs> Happy memories. <laughs> Let's watch me scream all the time when you were sad. It helped me laugh because I didn't think anything was giving me happiness. Oh. I actually saw people selling one sheet of toilet paper on eBay. <laughs> That's so sad. I'm sure one day, Island Girl. Today's not that day. That episode was so memorable. <laughs> I've only seen some Seinfeld, so not very many. Can't spare a square. <sighs> I will never take toilet paper for granted ever again. It's kind of like once you like hurt something in your body and you're like, I didn't even know I had that muscle, but now like I will never take it for granted when it's healthy. <laughs> Crazy lady next door is 91 and talks of outhouses and Sears Roba catalogs for toilet paper. Well, she's probably seen quite a lot in her 91 years. It's a lot of history at this point. A lot of change. Hi, Clara. It rolled out under the door. He sat there for a while trying <laughs> to figure out what to do. And a guy walks in and says, hey, mate, you want me to kick that? <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, dear.
Thank you, honey bunny. I don't feel like I shouldn't feel this way. I accept that I do. I just so dearly wish that I didn't. Sciatica nerve problems so once in a while they get through with the cramps and the leg. Sweet relief, yep. Sometimes you're like, why was that the thing that happened? There was a Days Without Pants 2020 cross stitch. <laughs> I have to send a message real quick. Hopefully I can remember it long enough to send it. It's a crochet pa Oh, the days without pants? Is that the one you said was a crochet one? Oh, toilet paper apocalypse. Oh, thank you. There's a cross stitch version on Etsy. <laughs> Sweet. 
so you have options. It occurs to me that with how much I'm stitching right now, like, will 24 hours of cross stitch even be like, yeah, I did it, yay, like it normally is for me? <laughs> like, here I am, I'm sitting at five hours. Not that I have the stitching to prove it's been five hours, but, um, I don't know. I'm still going to do it. normal is just the setting on the washer. Amen for that one. I'm really lightheaded right now. Define hydrated. It doesn't matter how you define it. The answer is no. But I'm trying. I promise you I'm trying. I am neither hydrated nor fed. <laughs> this one is, this is lemonade. So I got the lemonade part. 
Someone did suggest tea earlier to me many hours ago. Um, I'm waiting for my daughter to get up. I got in my fridge yesterday. She had told me exactly where what I needed was. Um, but as soon as I opened the refrigerator door, like I was dry heaving, like so I'm not really interested in getting in the refrigerator or the kitchen right now. I think I should try to get some rest. Mm, probably. Today's a hard day and I knew that this one would be. I knew that I would feel even more the heartache and devastation and the confusion. The thought of yogurt does sounds not like a good idea. <laughs> so I have not That doesn't mean that I can't try it, but usually if the thought of something doesn't sound like it'll go over well, usually that means it definitely won't go over well. Hi, Sharon. How's your snow? absolutely no bread. I have bread. The idea of bread. That's a hard no. It's really hard because like things that might work for like an upset stomach is not what's going to work for me right now because I'm not dealing with an upset stomach. I'm dealing with a, an overactive, hyperactive, whatever, gagging reflex. That's what I'm dealing with. And it's, and I'm not gagging because my stomach's upset. Like, so it, it literally is like a trial thing. My daughter ate crackers last night in the car and I could smell them and they weren't even like smelly crackers, but I could smell them and I was like, <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like, I guess crackers are out for me right now. Um, I may need a Gatorade. I might. I do think I'll be going to the store a few inches so far and then some next. That's crazy, Sharon. Inherited Stitches says that she's got like five inches of snow right now. And it's still coming down. I mean, it's probably not helpful, but my sky is blue. With like some wispy clouds. 
No fun when everything is super sensitive. Amen. But that's me. kind of salty it wasn't like 10 inches <laughs> blue skies are nice i i do like blue, blue skies <laughs> i just say it hesitatingly for all you people snowing who might prefer some blue skies and you're not getting it you're also salty somebody used up the night cool so you couldn't have any last night maybe you are the one who used it up <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's funny you guys just asked pretty much at the same time where you guys are from <laughs> I definitely prefer the sunny days over the gray ones my daughter likes it when it gets cold and I'm like, nope, bring on the warmth all the time. I'm not cold tolerant at all. Um, I'm also not stitching right now. <laughs> I need 98 more stitches, okay? Pretty sure this is the slowest I've been. A foot of snow is real winter. <laughs> that time when my like appendages, like my hands and my feet are just constantly cold, that's winter.
where I live, we don't get a lot of snow. So when it does snow, like everything shuts down <laughs> because they don't have enough snow plows and everything. How many stitches have I done so far? I have done 472. Good morning, Wendy. It is. It's um, Treasure Hunt Bookshelf by Amy Stewart. The super size max color version. And if this is your first time here and chatting, I'm a mess and I apologize that it's your first experience with me. Um, we have a coil oil radiator heater that you plug in. You prefer to be cool. Some people run hot, some people run cold. That is for certain. You're in Arizona, so no, that's definite no. Well, I have heard that like some of the northern parts of Arizona can get snow. You're working on, oh yay! We're both on Amy Stewart's, yay! Oh yeah, we can all visit Gurley in Norway and get snow and darkness. <laughs> I'm keeping it very real. We're definitely real here. I know Norway is gorgeous, but like in the winter, it's like snowy and dark. So that's not when I would go and visit. Some of the times your part of Colorado gets more snow than Wisconsin. <laughs> Real is, well, I guarantee you're not getting fake here. You never have, ever. 100% promise that. Um, I'm gonna go see if my daughter is up because I'm not sure if the sounds I'm hearing are her up. So, I will be back in a few minutes. Okay? If I'm not, be worried. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, it's different. Okay. That's very, very cold. That's very cold. Okay, hold on. I'll be back, but I will read all your messages when I come back.
Siri doesn't recognize your voice. <laughs> oh god. You'll bring your snowshoes. You're not going to complain about negative 15 again. <laughs> no, Nor Norway's further north than Colorado on the equator, so... Yeah. A lot of snows in one winter didn't help out at... Um, whoa. That's a really... January to June? I'm kind of, wow. <laughs> no, I'm like not sure about that at all. <laughs> Mind blown. I need it to be warm. I need the sun. Absolutely. In general, I think Canada and think cold in the winter. Y'all, when I'm like 50 degrees, it says it's 50 degrees right now. And I'm good with that. Y'all can keep the cold. <laughs> and I'll take the 50 degrees.
<laughs> I'm enjoying it from inside. Um, I would love to enjoy it from outside, but um, there's something about my mental and emotional state that would be hard to. Oh, I get, I know, where I get, I get humid. We're definitely not a dry climate here. But like, <sighs> humidity like presses on you when it's warm. And there's something about that, like, Yes, it's hot, but something about the feeling the humidity around me also feels really good. <laughs> yeah, girly, that would be hard. Because those are, that's like, like those kind of issues would activate more in the cold. Maybe the feeling of humidity to me is like a sensory thing. Where the the pressure of it is good. Needed. And maybe it's needed because it's hard for me to get it otherwise. Maybe. I'll have to think on that. Like, a full body hug, Sharon. Like, it's just all around you. All at once. In Arizona, it gets hot. But it is dry. I do know a lot of people who live in Arizona and like they always say like it's dry and it makes like this big difference. I've never had to live, uh, use a swamp cooler, but I've heard of them.
probably a bad sign when you're trying to thread the wrong side of your needle. You know, the end that doesn't have the needle hole. Hi, Christina. Can you tell that I'm in rough shape or something? I've been eating on Cheerios, but like, not very many at a time. I think I need eating defined a little bit to answer your question. Um... I need calories and I know I do. I did just go wake up my daughter. She's gonna, she knows I need something. She knows I need a shake thing. Um, I use Pattern Keeper Girly. Um, hold on, let me finish this thread. You don't have to for full coverage. Um, I started f working with full coverage before there was Pattern Keeper. And I printed out my PDF paper I needed and used a highlighter. Um, it is much easier to stitch with Pattern Keeper. So, I don't know if you've seen, like, how one works with Pattern Keeper, but here's Pattern Keeper. Let me move my magnets out of the way. So, like, you can search for your sig symbol. Like, this is the next one I'm going to do. So now you can see it's yellow. And I can see exactly where I need to go. Like, I don't have to look at all of these other symbols. I can just, I will probably do that one. And then, like, up here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, this way, right? Like, I can see which way I'm going to path my, my thread that way. Thank you, Shauna. Have a, have a good meeting and things. Um, girly, it's well worth paying for it. Especially if you already have. Like, I bought this tablet it was pretty cheap. It was under $100. And I, I pretty much use it exclusively for Pattern Keeper. Oh, yeah. I have definitely seen patterns or symbols that I'm like, I definitely would have mistaken those to be the same symbol if it weren't for Pattern Keeper. And then it's easy. You just are able to mark it off as done. And, like, you can see. Look at that. That's everything I've stitched. And you can see how much more I have to go on the whole, like, pattern. So... For me, I would rather stitch with Pattern Keeper than not, but I totally understand people who um, who stitch with out Pattern Keeper. There we go. Yes, Markup RXP is similar to Pattern Keeper. And you can use Pattern Keeper on a computer. It just takes a couple extra steps um, 
to be able to use it there. But that's totally possible. I think it also depends on how you like to stitch. Some people who stitch like just in a square or they go line by line, um, that's easier to do with a paper than a different method. Are there any... Um, I don't, before Pattern Keeper existed, I used something, Good Notes maybe, I can't remember because it's been too long, but I do remember that I used something that was free, it's not anywhere as good as Pattern Keeper, but it was something, and it, and it worked. Somebody to me today, Catherine, she suggested, she called it Jello water. It's basically jello that you make with like double the water amount. So it's like more liquidy than like jello y. And she says you drink it through a straw. That sounds palatable, it requires going to the store, but um, so I think I need to go to the store and just get like lots of things like because um. I need more calories. Yes, cold water, thank you. That is what she said. I would have forgotten that specific thing, thank you. I mean, I've never heard of it before like making it that liquidy so but it's one of the suggestions that haven't felt like I would be gagging so that's at least closer to like the thought of it makes me gag um I have meal replacement shakes. Um, sorry. I think I can do a basic protein shake. Um, but what I'm doing is meal replacement shakes because I 
can also drink those and they have more calories and it takes the same amount of effort to drink them but they take like um it just takes me a while to consume it right now <laughs> so it's like I'm kind of snacking on these Cheerios but at the same time there's going to come a point where my stomach is like done but like it's not really given one and a half cups is 140 Cheerios and I guarantee you I'm not getting 100, one and a half cups so Pattern Keeper helps you realize how many mistakes you've made to like the piece you're working on now you want to throw it away you have so many boobies in it that you're sick of it now I'm sorry Old House makes a good protein coffee drink that's good if you like coffee. I've not tried those, so. I know the Bolt House brand. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't consume at a different speed. That's the problem. Is like, I have to manage the gagging reflex and try not to trigger it because if I trigger it it's potential that it could lead to like dry heaving which is different from the gagging um it also could eating or drinking can also trigger nausea so it's Definitely tricky to navigate and figure out. And I'm, I'm not trying to, like, complain about it or anything. I'm just trying to navigate it. That's really all I'm trying to do. But I can't, like, pretend like it's not a thing either. I'm stitching because if I don't, I would be curled up in my bed bawling my eyes out and in complete misery. So... I do stitching for a lifeline. Stitching is a good distraction on like a normal day which earlier we've talked about always being stressed as a state of normal, right? Um, so stitching is good on a normal day as a distraction. And right now, like this constant live streaming also is like the, um, the extra distraction that was really needed like stitching on its own right now wouldn't be enough I would just still be bawling and still be I don't know it just would not be enough I 
and I'm very glad. So you have that. Normally I read before bed. Right now I can't comprehend reading. But that's normally what I do like when I'm getting ready for bed. Perhaps because I'm usually stitching regularly. <laughs> I don't know. I've learned so many lessons from stitching, like symbolic lessons. I kind of figure that like, Since I can't change my emotional state, and don't get me wrong, like, it's a really weird thing to be both, like, to have feelings of happiness, but also feelings of devastation. Like, to have both of those is such a weird combination to me. Um, but like, I can only try to affect it, but I can't actually dictate what it is. And I can't dictate my body's reactions either. What I can dictate is what I choose to do right now. And I'm choosing to not lay in my bed in misery. I will stitch in misery instead. <laughs> Fun, yeah. Yeah. I mean, all you can do is move forward. Whatever forward is. Forty more stitches, y'all. Exactly, Sharon. Yeah, for me, my thoughts are basically like, but I brought beauty into the world. Somebody gave me pain. But I'm bringing beauty.
can't really think of a better thing I can do. Finally starting to stitch. Nativity. I will start in the upper left hand corner probably. But I might start in the upper right hand corner. I haven't actually decided yet. Oops. Thanks. Probably, but it can wait 40 more stitches. Okay. Thank you. You're um, the I fully intended to bring down Christmas this last weekend. It didn't happen. And now it will stay up until uh, until I have calories um so I do normally start home in the mountain or patterns in the upper left hand corner however I'm considering starting it in the upper right hand corner and stitching it like I had was stitching Father Christmas if you know how that went some of you will know what I mean and some of you will not good morning Alara I know you messaged me back but I haven't read them yet. That is true. It is closer to the bridge. I... Th yeah. I just haven't decided how... how much um like how to which way I want to stitch with it that's what I'm saying okay I'm on my last 40 stitches I've also been live for six hours now, so I'm not exactly stitching fast. This particular live holds a lot of heavier topics and a lot of crying so I can I'm gonna do it 
It just better not take me another hour to do it. No, it won't take me that long. We'll see. And I've got calories now. Like, I can eat the Cheerios, but I can't eat them very much. At a time. But, like, I'm able to drink this faster even more than I did a couple of days ago, so... It is improving, just not a whole lot. I know, it's like the one time we can cheer for calories, right? Crying can be cleansing. And I think it was. It's just... Chairs are like crunchy air if you're trying to get calories. <laughs> I know, I was reading the box, I'm like, one and a half cups is 140 calories. <laughs> and I'm definitely not eating a one and a half cups. But it is something that I can eat. So there's that. I was thinking today I would try crackers, but my experience in the car last night with Kaylin eating crackers tells me nope. Small wins are good. That's why I'm trying to like, I'm trying to be aware of what I am consuming so that I kind of can gauge if I'm consuming more. <laughs> Clean cherries are for little kids to make messes with. <laughs> yes, but I can also stomach it. <laughs> Did I get sick in the car? Well, I was gagging. I didn't actually, like, start heaving or anything, but I definitely started gagging. She even tried, like keeping the packet closed unless she was getting in there with the cracker but like even her just chewing it like the scent just wafted out and it was not i was like well <laughs> what, we're not trying to crack we're not trying crackers yet <laughs> i was thinking like they're plain they're plain kind of crackers but more substantial than cheerios so maybe Maybe it'll work. Nope. <laughs> Not gonna try now. But I think I'll drag her back to the store again today. And I can't, I can't thread this. Come on. There we go. Um, and we'll get 
something good. Jello. And we'll get um, Gatorade's being suggested for hydration. I have no idea where I'm staying. Up here, I moved up because I finished the diagonal and now I'm going back up to the next one. Um, you're being bad and eating peanut M&Ms at 9.30 a.m. Um, I can't help you with that. <laughs> I can't. So, yeah, Gatorade and Jell-O and probably more meal shakes. Sharon, Sharon had a cupcake at 7. Uh, somebody mentioned Pedialyte. Um, but it wasn't, like, in the same part of the store as the meal shakes, so... I think I need to go into the baby section, which is really close to the cleaning aisle, which has artificial scents that are gross, are gross on a normal level, let alone like me right now level. That would be something I'd have to like, Kaylin, go get, and then she'll be like, I don't know what I'm getting. <laughs> um, yeah, baby section. I, I told you I'm a mess and I'm complicated. <laughs> and, but I'm real. I'm real about it. So bonus points. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not logging food at all, but I'm just kind of keeping in mind a rough estimate. Where's my needle? Didn't I put my needle through? Here it is. I found it. in the freezer kind okay I'm not like all up on Pedialyte at all so like I know it'll pass but I kind of want to know how much weight I'm going to lose before it passes, you know? Oh, thank you, Steve. I hope you have a good work day. Thank you for hanging out here and for your comments earlier. I really appreciate them. And thank you, Alara. I will message you back when I'm finished with this. I have less than 20 stitches left, so. Um, pr I don't know, Rachel. Um, yeah, because there will be a lot of smells, and there will still be visual foods. Um, Richter, this started Friday night. And I know what it's due to, so it's, I, I know the cause, I know. I mean, even things that Kaylin makes, or, you know, like she could make something for me. She made macaroni and cheese yesterday or two days ago, I don't know. Um, 
like, and I wasn't around for her to make that, but like I came in closer contact with it and I was like, nope, I can't do that. <laughs> She's been really good about it. Like, She's like, stop apologizing, Mom. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> I'll try to stop apologizing. I'm not apologizing for, like, what my body is doing because, um, like, I know it's a stress reaction. not something that I can control so it's not like I don't know but but I do recognize that it it means she's not eating as well as she would like if I were helping with food and stuff like that um so like she's she's getting the choice of what she's going to eat and things like that but um She's also a teenager and 13, and so it doesn't mean that she's going to make, like, all the great choices, you know? <laughs> she really is, honey bunny. She's, she really is a good kid. We definitely have a good relationship, and she would say the same. Yeah, Christina, everything else, like, <laughs> my tablet just gave me, like, a 15-minute battery notification. I've drained it over the last six-plus hours. Um, yeah. I know that, like, not eating is playing a big factor, like, in how cold I feel and my energy and... Um, honestly, the sleep could be worse. It's not good, but it could be worse. And so I'm very, very grateful that it's not worse. Hey, look. That was exactly 570 stitches. Like, that never happens. Um, my needle size is size 28. I will use a larger size if I'm working on a different fabric. Oh, it does. Um, I I like Bohin needles. This one is a Peacemaker needle, but they're size 28, and I like them both. They go through the fabric very, very nicely. So, um, and yeah, this is 28 count fabric. Um, for like when I'm working with Ada, like on my daily 30 piece, my Woodland Enchantress, that's 16 count. And I'm using whatever needle came with the kit. I don't know what size that is. Um, but it's a bigger needle, so I know that. Okay, friends, you're welcome. Um, I am going to log off. I have zero idea what I'm going to do, but I assume I'm going to be back at some point in the day. It's a safe assumption, but I don't, 
I can't make any promises on one because I have no idea. But I super appreciate you for hanging out. And even though many of the people who were with me during my like massive cry fest probably aren't here anymore, I'm grateful for them for like sticking with me through that. Like, please don't underestimate the um, impact you have on me right now. Please. Like, just, just don't do that. <laughs> so, much love to all of you. Until later.